What's up with it, people? What's up with it, people? As you come in, hit the like and subscribe button. And today, we're going to talk about a sticky topic. Um, the black community. The black community and the condition that it finds itself in. You know, some of the conditions that the black community find themselves in is bigger than one man, right? Because we will find ourselves trying to ask a man that work at McDonald's to fix a multi-billion dollar problem, right? And so I'm just here to say that um, that's next to impossible. And the real people who's responsible for these things is our politicians, our quote unquote leaders, the people who's supposed to lead us, who's supposed to show us, who's supposed to teach us, not leave us in filth. When you go in these cities, if when you go in these cities, when you go in communities where there is a lack of employment. There is a everybody own businesses, but the people in that community. Then you have a property problem where the properties start to decay. The properties start to go down in value. Not only do the properties go down in value, but the livelihood, right? The life expectancies go down in value. And instead, and instead of our governments and other institutions saying, hey, we have to get a lot of these young guys into this construction, this development, you know, this community improvement, we have to put this money in there, right? <clears throat> they leave them to suffer and to die off. The situation that we're looking at now is a situation where people die off. The people that once stayed in these houses, they died off. They're here no more. No one invested in them. They were happy that they left. These are some of the sad truths in these black communities where the people who's in charge, the people who holds the power would rather you just die off. This is why there is a lack of investments in our communities because it gives because it produces it produces failure. Right? It makes you feel like you have no way out. This is what people are putting, like people are telling people, hey, you know, get a minimum wage job, right? But he's looking and he see no way out because he said, well, how do I feed these three little babies and my baby mama, right? And take care of myself with a minimum wage job. These things are placed on men, <clears throat> black men in particular, and we are expected to master this. We are expected to take eight and nine dollar an hour, right? And produce a suburb. You know, produce a utopia. And I just want to set the record straight that you can stop looking at people who's uneducated, right? And 
make minimum wage to come in and save a community that the investors should save, that people should come in with lots of money and change the lives of these people in these cities. There is no way that the lawmakers should be able to keep making war with these black populations in these rundown cities. These unalive and infested cities. That's what they have become. Killing fields. Pain. Trauma. Drama. Dream killers. Right? This is what the black communities have been engineered to become. And so, we cannot be afraid to call them out and say, hey, you're, you are responsible for financing these things. You are responsible for coming up with different ideals and different programs that pulls people out of poverty, that helps people renovate their communities. You are responsible. You say that we are Americans, right? You better start acting like it. We don't want no words out at all. We all Americans, but we don't get treated like Americans, right? We're left to just survive. I mean, in these rundown communities, like the one that I'm showing you, right? On every corner, there are Indians who's making all the money. So the black people in the communities that's poor and that need help and need assistance, the little money that they do got, instead of them putting it in the hands of some more black people, building them up so that they may help other poor black people, they're giving this money and they're enriching other groups of people. I don't know who set this up. I don't know if the Republicans set this up. I don't know if the Democrats set this up. But I know that the government assisted them in making sure that we never, as black people, see the light. The light is ownership. The light is businesses making money where you can employ your people. Ensure your people, give your people a livelihood, give your people a sense of power and dignity. That's where the light is, and they don't want us. Who is they? Whoever's standing in our way. Whoever says, hey, it's the Democrats. It's the Republicans, too. It's the Republicans, too. The Republicans have a chance to say, okay, look, hey, people, since they don't want to do this, I got a check for you. And I got this that'll help this and get this out of it. They can do that, but they're not. And we have to ask, hey, where you at? How dare a black community have to sit back and watch Ukraine get money? Israel get money. Gaza get money, right? Um, you have people crossing the border illegally getting money, right? Good money. Thousands of dollars of money things. All kinds of things, right? Our community is just deteriorating. People are being unalive daily. We live in a state of terror, right? Who says we don't have we don't get a chance to state our demands? I would love to see the person who says we don't have the right to state our demands while the government is giving everybody and their mama a dollar. Right? Now we have to be the loudest 
when we state our demands. And we have to have it all figured out when we state our demands. We don't just say empty words with empty checks. Mm -mm. When we say things, we mean them, and they actually can better the livelihood of the people. It can transform the community for better. Black people. Poor white people. This is just the beginning of what we see. Will it end? I don't know. I know the way that it's supposed to. I mean, I know the way that we can make it in. And that's by getting the proper funding to everybody that needs it. Making sure everybody in America has the proper funding so if they can't get a job or if they don't make enough they still will have money to put back into the economy they still can have extra money to put into that piece of real estate and kind of redevelopment i mean this is this we can't have a group of people that's so rotten on the inside that it paralyzes america financially Because it's a group of people who don't want to see nobody with nothing but them. And this hurt America. This hurt the investors. This hurt people that got things to sell. I mean, it, it, it hurts when you intentionally put poverty on the people because those people could be spending money with other people and everybody could be doing great. But you're intentionally holding a group of people back. America can never be great, right? Until we're all great. America can never be great until we're all great. If I'm sitting up somewhere fat, eating and my stomach poked out and I look over there and I see somebody who's skinny and I ain't ate. I can't feel good by myself. That food, it meant me nothing. Because I just seen somebody else who's suffering, who haven't ate. And I know I'm fat and I'm full. But I still have sympathy for that other person over there. This is the America that got to be created. Not the hateful America, not the us versus them America, but we're all in this together, America, right? Hey, when that sun get hot, don't it burn us all? When that sun get hot, don't it burn us all? When the hurricanes come, don't it affect us all? It don't say, oh, no, he's white. No, he's black. It don't care what color you is. It don't care how much money you got. Right? It's time for America to try something new, right? You know, America said, well, this won't work. This hasn't worked, right? So let us come up with a plan for four to eight years. And if it don't work, hey, take the plan back. Do the plan cost money? Of course it costs money. It costs money to drink water in America. So of course this plan is going to cost money. But will it have a positive impact? Of course. And that's what counts, the positive impact. We have to stop letting the racist agenda the racist propaganda, the us versus them. You know, we have to stop letting that hold us back as America because all it's doing is creating tension and hatefulness and disrespectfulness and real pain and trauma that we don't have to cause to each other. It's time for us to lift each other up spiritually, pray for each other, 
financially help each other if we can. It's time out for the cold heart, evil ways. We don't want to see the Lord punish us for being evil, now do we? So we turn from our evil and wicked ways. You hear me? The Bible said turn. What the turn mean? Turn mean you were going in that direction. You was up in there. So you need to turn from that. You need to leave the evil. You had the evil in you. The people he was talking to, they had the evil in them. He said, leave the evil and come back to the good. So you need to turn from the evil. Leave that evil and step back into the good. It's not impossible. People need you. People need friends. People need help. People need a helping hand. People don't need to get stepped on and shot and locked in the cells and all these things and fed the lowest of the foods. And come on now, people. When is this going to stop? Until the next time, peace.